Hello, my name is Dr Michael Toes and I'm a lecturer in public health at the Lincoln Medical School. The students I mostly teach are medical students, they're students who are hoping to someday become doctors, but actually what I'm talking about today in terms of local health data is also something that's re relevant to students from a range of disciplines. So it's, um, it's something that would also be relevant to many of our nursing students, to many of our health and social care students, and also to students in other areas such as political studies. We talk about these types of topics in all these settings, so hopefully it's going to be relevant to a range of different students. So when we think about healthcare, we often think about healthcare on a one-to-one -one kind of basis. We think about an individual patient, going to see her individual doctor and talking about her symptoms and getting a diagnosis. But actually, public health is a little different. When we think about public health, we're thinking about populations and what a population as a whole needs in the way of healthcare. So there's a lot in pub about public health in the news at the moment in the context of coronavirus. We're hearing a lot more about public health, but that's not all public health does. Public health also involves um, thinking about non-infectious diseases. So we think about things like smoking and alcohol consumption. We think about giving children the sort of information they need, the skills they need to have a healthy lifestyle. We also sort of think about health protection activities. So we think about activities that, for example, your local council might take make sure that the takeaway that you're going to this evening um, gives you food that's safe for you to eat. So a range of different activities, but there are activities where we're focused on the population as a whole rather than on sort of providing health care for one individual. So one of the most common public health campaigns that's around, and you'll almost certainly have seen this on your television, in your newspaper, and whatever else you sort of have a look at, is the Change for Life. The Change for Life campaign is a national campaign, tends to focus on topics around eating well, moving more. So eating healthily, being physically active, national level campaign. And that's quite common in public health, because as I said, public health is population based. So quite often the messages we're trying to give out are national. So we're trying to give the same message to everyone in the UK or even they're global. So you've got things like the World Health Organization that will set public health messages that are relevant to people around the world. But sometimes we're not thinking about things on a national or international scale. Sometimes we want to think about public health on a more local basis. So we want to understand the needs perhaps of a particular town or even a smaller community within a town. So this is Sutton-on-Sea. Sutton-on-Sea is one of our coastal communities in Lincolnshire. You can see I've put a little red um, circle around where it is on the map. So it's that dark blue area on the map and a photo of the coastline there, Sandy Beach, it's a coastal community. And one of the things about Sutton-on-Sea is it also has a much older population. So 45% of people in this, in this area are aged over the age of 65. And perhaps unsurprisingly with an older population, about half of all residents are either retired from work or they don't work due to disability or long-term health care. Compare that to another part of Lincolnshire. The car home, which again I've ringed in red, is an area in the sort of centre of Lincoln. It's the area where the University of Lincoln is. And unsurprisingly, perhaps because it's where the university is, the age profile is very different. In car home, only 8% of the population are aged over 65. So I've got a difference there from 45%, nearly half in Sutton on Sea, to 8% in car home. And the median age of the population, so the age where half the population is older and half the population is younger, in car home is just 22. And 28% of residents in car home are students, or they were at the 2011 census. The university is growing a little bit, so that may not be so accurate anymore. But so unsurprisingly then, the two profiles of the area are quite different. So if we were thinking about something like that change for life message that's on the national campaign, well, the messages about eat well and move more are still important both for older people and for younger people. We still want people to eat healthily at all ages of their life. But we might give them sort of slightly different spins if we were trying to do a public health campaign in Sutton compared to Lincoln. So, for example, if you were trying to give a message in Sutton-on-Sea about exercising more, you might focus on perhaps gentler forms of exercise, perhaps taking a walk along the coast, perhaps sort of um, exercise that are more suitable for people who have other health conditions as well. Whereas in Lincoln, if you're trying to do an exercise message, it might be much more focused on the types of high intensity sports, 
those kinds of things. So you'd still be trying to get the same message across, but you'd target it in a slightly different way. There are other good reasons why we want to understand health needs sometimes on a much more local basis. Because if you're looking at things on a much more local basis, that gives you the chance to potentially identify problems and address problems. So let's say you've got two areas that you know in general are quite similar. So perhaps they're both coastal towns, perhaps they're both city centres. But there's some also some differences when you look at health statistics. Perhaps there are different outcomes on a problem like heart disease. Perhaps one area has higher rates of heart disease than the other. If you look at the data on that local level, well, that gives you a chance to firstly try and work out why there's a difference. Is there some other difference in the populations we haven't noticed? Perhaps you could learn from one area to improve things in the other area. The practice of the first area did a really successful heart disease campaign, and we could take that and borrow it and use it in the other area. It also gives us a chance to think about whether we need different services in place. So perhaps it's the fact that one of those towns has better access to um, health to health services around heart disease, so perhaps we need to put those in place in the second area. Those are kinds of reasons why we want might want to look at health data on a much more local level, not just look at the national picture. OK, so let's say we want to look at health data on this much more local area level. Where do we get data from? Well, one really common source is the census, the UK census. So that's done every 10 years. The next one is due in 2021. And the census is basically a big survey that gets sent to every household in the UK with lots and lots of questions about who's living there, um, how old they are, all sorts of different information about the house and the health needs. And that sort of gives us a really good overview of health needs around the country. One of the problems with the census is it's quite a big piece of work to do. Um, there's lots and lots of data to analyse, and so that's why it's only done every 10 years. So one of the problems is now, we're in 2020, the last census was done in 2011, so the data is getting a little bit out of date. Some of the things in it might not be so correct anymore. Um, the Office for National Statistics is really important in collecting data. They do a lot of work in between the census as well. They'll do sort of other pieces of work that collect data about different groups. Um, they'll do sort of regular updates and sort of some of the information from the census. That's quite useful, collects together all the statistics in one place. The NHS, of course, has quite a lot of data. It collects data on who's using its services, what treatments it's providing. Um, so that's, again, gives us lots and lots of data about health needs in different areas, you know, what the rates of this like in one hospital compared to a different. Then, as university academics, we also do lots of research in between sort of censuses and sort of on different areas. So we might send out surveys, we do interviews with people, we collect data in lots and lots of different ways um, and use that as well to sort of think about the health needs of different populations. There are other sources of local statistics um, that you might well find if you're ever looking up health statistics for an area. But there can be some problems with those. So one thing you might find is that sometimes health statistics are put together by people who have an interest in making an area look really good. The local tourist board want you to visit their area. Local estate agents want you to buy a house in their area. So they like to put together statistics that make an area look really positive. The other thing you might have the other way is, for example, the local newspaper might want to put together dramatic information. They might want to put together statistics say, that say there's crimes rising because that looks more dramatic in a newspaper headline. So while there are other sorts of local statistics, and they can be quite useful, particularly if you look at things that aren't covered in, in more official statistics, but there can also be problems or weaknesses with using those. So what I'd always say if students are thinking about using um, statistics about a local area is think about some key questions. So firstly, who's collected these statistics? To together. How have they done that? So if they've done a survey, who did they survey? How did they find people to fill out their survey? When did they do it? If it's getting older, you know, the older the data is, the more it might be out of date, things might change in a local area. And why they did it? Were they trying to, did they have a particular reason why they wanted to pull statistics together? Would that have encouraged them to maybe leave out some information that didn't fit their key message? 
But one of the really good pieces of news is actually there's lots of sources where you can find local health data online and for free. And quite often it's sort of been put together by by official organisations and it's designed to be put together in a way that makes it quite easy to use for things like student projects. So I'm just going to go through some key sources. I'll switch over to my web browser right now. One. So this is the Lincolnshire Research Observatory. Obviously, the Lincolnshire Research Observatory is focused on Lincolnshire statistics. There will probably be something similar for other areas of the UK. But they're all going to look a little bit different or be set up in slightly different ways. Um, so this, as I say, is the Lincolnshire one. You might have to search around for one for a different area. But what this is designed to do is bring together a range of statistics that you can simply search through quite easily. So this one is designed to have area profiles. So if I put in, you've got a drop down menu you here of lots and lots of different kinds of data. So 2011 census demography is one. Select a geographic here, select a type of geography. This can be a little bit confusing. Um, the way areas are sort of set for health data, it's sort of based on the kinds of areas that are used by your local council. We've got county here, so that will be the whole of Lincolnshire. Then we can get local authority districts. So Lincolnshire is divided up into smaller district councils. And then we've got wards, which are kind of the areas that you might vote for. So if you vote for your local town councillor, that will be in a ward. And then we've got much, much smaller areas that have the super out areas. So the lowest level of those is a collection of about 1,500 houses. Um, so the smaller the area is, the, the more specific your data is. The problem is what tends to happen is that there's less data available for the very small areas because either it hasn't been collected at that level of detail or because if you go down to too small an area, then it potentially becomes possible to identify individual households. If you're looking for, say, data about an unusual health condition, if the area goes too small, it might get to a level where it's identifiable. Let's go up to wards because that's one where I know census will have information for. Now it's giving me a drop down here of the, of the information for different wards in Lincolnshire. So that was our home that we mentioned earlier, where the university is, give it a little while to load. And what that does is it tells us the statistics here for car home compared to the statistics for Lincolnshire as a whole. This was the point I was making earlier about the age profile um, of well, it doesn't of working age people compared to um, compared to Lincolnshire as a whole. So we've got a lot in car home, we've got a lot of people here in the sort of age 16 to 64 working age bracket. We've got lower levels of children under 16 and we've got lower levels of older people. And that relates to it being a student area. Um, as you can see, quite a lot of statistics here. And bear in mind, I only picked one menu after that drop down. So one of the really good things about the research observatory, and this is something you certainly will find from local areas, is actually a lot of the work of collecting together key data on the local area has already been done for you because there's something called the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment. And that's a piece of work that's done by the local health body and by the local council to pull out what the key pieces of health information for the local area are. So if we click on that um, and then we go to topics. What that does is that gives you a list of sort of health topics that you could find key information for. So everything from sort of children's health, dementia, um, major diseases, major issues affecting adults. And if we went into any of those, what we would see would be a range of information about the statistics, about the priorities for those areas and about um, what the local council, what the local NHS is doing to improve services for people in relation to those topics. So that's the Lincolnshire Research Observatory. Another one that you certainly will have access to um, from anywhere in the UK is the Fingertip Service at Public Health England. Again, a range of profiles covering, covering a range of different topics. Um, I'm just going to pull one out here, which is the Public Health Outcomes Framework. Again, give it a moment to load. Again, we can select an area so you can put in your postcode here and it will bring up the relevant data. 
I'm going to select the region East Midlands because that's where Lincolnshire is. And then select here Lincolnshire View Data. And what this does is give me information um, to the topics it highlighted in this profile around life expectancy. And what it does is it sort of sets a benchmark where we compare the data for Lincolnshire against the data for England as a whole. It's kind of got a traffic light system. So we can see for this measure, yellow, um, healthy life expectancy at birth in Lincolnshire is similar to that for, the UK, for England as a whole. Conversely, if we go down to these ones, it's a little bit lower than the average for England as a whole, so that's marked as red. So again, a whole range of data in here. Um, I'm not going to go through it all in detail, but there's lots and lots of different sources of information you could find and set up to compare one part of the country to another area of the country. Another tool I quite like is the police data. Um, you might think, well, why are we looking at police data um, if we're talking about health? Actually, crime is quite important when we're thinking about health. Um, if you think about it, um, partly because you know some crimes do involve people's health being damaged, for example, violent crime, but also if we think more about psychological health. If you live in an area in an area of the country that doesn't feel very safe, that might have an impact on your mental health. It might also discourage you from doing things like exercising, getting out and about, going out in the evenings. So it might affect your health in that. And again, the police website set up so that you can look up information for your local area. Again, you can put it in postcode and find your local area. I mentioned Sutton on C earlier, so let's get the information up for that. So Sutton on C is part of Mablethorpe, so it's already that's how the police classify it. So it gives us information about the crime per month. You can see crime levels in the area have come down a little bit over the last year. It also gives us a map, and actually the map's really detailed. So if you look at the map, it'll tell it'll sort of show you where crimes have been logged in the last well, not quite the last month. I'm recording this in May 2020, and the most up-to-date date is March 2020. So pretty recent. And it'll give you details on crime statistics for the local area what types of offences and the kinds of areas that they took place in. So that's actually a really detailed, quite informative source of information. So those are just a couple of sources that are available online, quite free, easy to use. Um, one thing that I would actually say is actually sometimes there's more data than you need. There's so much information out there. I showed you those health websites. Actually, one thing I've found sometimes with students, they're a little overwhelmed with knowing, well, well, well what do I actually put in my project or my assignment? Um, I'd say prioritise. So if we're thinking about health information, what are the key issues for the area? So what are the health problems that either affect the highest number of people or have the most serious impact? If you're specifically working on a, on a project, if you've got an assignment to do, think about what your question actually is. Might be lots of data that's really interesting, but perhaps doesn't really answer your core question. So you might need to just narrow it down a little bit. Think about diverse needs. So I sort of said public health will potentially think about a population as a whole or an area as a whole. But you might also need to think think about well, are there some groups in an area whose needs are perhaps getting missed? Is there a sort of perhaps a small population who might have a slightly different set of needs? So my own research area quite often focuses on LGBT health, so health for lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans people. But one thing we know from the census is the last census, the 2011 census, didn't really collect data on that population. So actually, if I'm looking for data on that group, I might need to get information in a slightly different way. And also, I'd always say if you're working on assignment, is put your information to, into context. So what are the implications of statistics? All right, you found that this health problem is an issue in the area, but why why does that matter? What's the implication for the people who live there or for local service providers? What can we do differently to try and address that health problem? So I guess just kind of wrap up some of the key points of what I've covered. If you're working in healthcare, you will probably have to make some use of local health data. It's it's quite common across all 
all kind of health disciplines. As I say, I teach medical students, but nurses have very similar kind of use of health data. It ha and using the data helps you understand the needs of the population you work with. If you're working in a GP surgery that's in a particular town, it's useful to know things like, well, is this a mostly older population? Is it a mostly younger population? People tend to have a lot of other health conditions. There are some careers that are specifically based around working with health data. So if it's something that interests you, definitely lots of career opportunities. And as I've hopefully highlighted here, there are lots of free data sources you could use find out more about local health area and health needs. Although I didn't show you, because we were doing it fairly quickly, lots of them are also set up so that you can do things like produce your own maps, produce charts, produce other ways of visualising the data, which can be quite useful for things like student projects. So I hope that's helpful. I'll leave it there. Um, have a good day.